Read. They are black until the right. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourneth in the gates thereof language. In the gates thereof language. Our leadership, our power. We have no true elders in our communities. We're going by whatever the so-called white man has told us. We're being ruled by our oppressor right now, okay? The Lord said, our gates language. We don't have no power right now. Read. They are black unto the ground. He said the Jews are black unto the ground. Remember, the Bible says that it is evident that our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah. It says they are black unto the ground. Man was formed from the dust of the ground. We are made in the image of God. Okay, But they called us the enemy. They call us dogs and scum when we are the children of God. So why did they give us this image? Why did we get this when the Bible says that our Lord and Savior looks more like this? Okay. White woolly hair, meaning gray, okay, in color, and, and burnt brass, meaning dark brown. The brother was dark brown. Our Lord and Savior was a dark brown brother, okay? That's right. But they gave us the lie. So where did this start? Give me 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Right. And then Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. And read verse 4 as well. Gone. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Bring it out. Let no man deceive you by any means. The Lord said, let no man deceive you by any means. Read. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that's what's happened. Our people have fell away from who they are. We don't know who we are as a people. We go by black, African-American, Mexican, Hispanic, Native American, Indian, all these bywords that they placed on us. We have fell away from the laws of God and our heritage. Read. And that man of sin be revealed. But now, okay, now that man of sin is being revealed. We're starting to wake up in these last days and realize who we are now, okay? Like it says in uh, Romans 13 and 11, it is high time that we wake out of sleep. Now we're starting to wake up in these last days and realizing who our oppressor is, okay? Who this man of perdition is. Esau, the so-called white man, who gave us this Cesar Borgia and made the whole world bow down to him. Read. The son of perdition. The son of destruction. That's what that means. Because they're going into destruction. Read. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. You see that? And that's exactly what they've done. They sit in the seat of God. Read. Or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. You see that? And that's what they try to do. Give me Ezekiel 28. Start at verse 2. Ezekiel 28, verse 2. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, and verse 2. Bring it out. Yeah. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God. Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. You see that? And this is how they did it. They lifted up this man and said that he is God. Read. I sit in the seat of God. And that's what they've done. To deceive the whole world and said that this is God. This is how they're trying to sit in the seat of God. Read. In the midst of the seas. In the midst of the seas, meaning the nations. That's what that means. They sit in the midst of the nations, calling themselves God. Read. Yet thou art a man and not God. The Lord said, but he's only a man and not God. Give me Matthew 24, huh. verse 4 and 5. Matthew 24, verse 4 and 5. And then after that, give me wisdom of Solomon 14. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 4 and 5. Bring it out. And Yahawashai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. you see that? The same thing Paul was saying in Thessalonians. Don't be deceived. Don't let no man deceive us. This man right here has deceived our people. God. Our people are destroyed by this man and everything that is connected to him. Okay, read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Many shall come in the name of saying that they are Christ. You had David Koresh. You had Jim Jones. You had Charles Manson. But the main corporate, Cesar Borgier, sitting in the seat of God, deceiving the whole world. Read. And shall deceive many. And deceive many. Our people are destroyed by this. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Start at verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Verse 15. 
Book of Psalms, Solomon, chapter 14, verse 15. This is why the Bible says we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. We got to believe the record that the Bible has given us, not what man has given us. This is the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, and verse 15. Bring it out. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he hath made an image of his child soon taken away. What is this talking about? Rod Rodrigo Borgier, Pope Alexander VI. When his son Cesar Borgier died, he, he wanted an image to be painted of him. This is what this is talking about. Read. Now honored him as a god. What the Lord, what the, what the Bible say? Now honored him as a god. You see that? This man, this pope, this pope of Rome honored his son as a god. Read which was then a dead man and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. You see that? And they made the world start bowing down to this new religion, okay? Catholicism and Christianity took hold of the whole world. Everyone started being subject to it, read. God. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. You see that? Was kept as a law, Sunday worship. Breaking the Sabbath day. Shalom, brother. You got a minute for the word of God? You got a minute? What's your nationality on your father's side, if you don't mind me asking? Colombian. Colombian? Okay, so you're Hispanic. Okay, are you are you familiar with the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans being the Israelites of God? The true chosen people of God? Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 6. Actually, let's finish that out first. So right now, brother, we're going over how the world has deceived us with this. They gave us this image, but is this biblical? That is not biblical. So where did this come from? Do you know where this came from? So right now we're going over this. This came, this man's name is Cesar Borgier. This was a real man. This is Pope Alexander the sixth son, okay? Rodrigo Borgier, this is his son. And this was the image that was propagated all over the world for us to bow down to worship in the name of Christianity. But this isn't what the Bible says what Christ looked like. Are you, do you know what Christ looked like, the image of Christ? That's right. That's right. Let's get it for the brother real quick. So hold that. Let's get, let's go back over it one more time. Get Revelation 1, 13. Because we've been deceived, brother. We, we've been deceived by the world. And so we got to come back to the truth of things. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 14. Bring it out. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So what people on earth have woolly hair? Right, that's what the Bible says, right? He had woolly hair, read. As white as snow. So in this context, meaning his hair was gray, okay? That's what it's That's what it's talking about, read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. This is a prophecy. I'm going to show you real quick. Give me Genesis 49, verse 10. Genesis 49, verse 10. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, and verse 10. Bring it out. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, uh -huh. nor a lawgiver from between his feet, Read. until Shiloh come. And that's talking about Christ, Yahawashai, his Hebrew name being Hamashiach, Yahawashai. That's actually how you pronounce his name in the Hebrew. Read. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And he's going to bring his children together. Read. Verse 11. Binding his fall unto the vine, and his asses colt, Unto the choice vine, he washed his garments with wine, Read. and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Uh -huh. His eyes shall be red with wine. This was a prophecy. Now go back to Revelation 1 and 14. It says his eyes will be red with wine. It was customary for the Jews to drink wine. They even called Christ a wine bibber. He wasn't a drunk, but he did drink wine. He his first miracle was what? He turned the water into wine. So go back to Revelation 1 and 14. Uh -huh. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 14. Bring it out. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Actually, read verse 11, because I want, I want you to hear this, brother. This is important. Verse 11. Verse 11. Saying, and these are the words of Yahushai, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Uh-huh. And what thou seest. What thou what? What thou seest. So he's talking to John the Revelator here. He's telling John what you see. Read. Right in a book. Right in a book. Now go back to verse 14. Uh, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So his head was wool, his hair was woolly in texture, read. As white as snow. Uh-huh. 
and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Meaning that his eyes would be red with wine, which was the prophecy in Genesis 49, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now what color is brass? It's a derivative of brown. It's a derivative of brown. But how brown was Christ? It doesn't stop there, read. As if they burned in a furnace. The Lord said that his son, Hamashiach Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, it says that he was so dark it looked like the color of him looked like it was burned in a furnace. Polished brass as if it burned in a furnace. Daniel 10 and 6. We wow. literally just went over this right before you guys walked up. Okay, I'll praise the most high. Daniel 10 and 6. Wow. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 6. Bring it up. His body also was like the barrel. Meaning green. The, the color of his clothes was green. Barrel in this context is B-E-R-R-E-L, I believe, which is the color green. Read. Like, like the sister's shirt that she got on right there. Read. And his face as the appearance of lightning. His face was as the appearance of lightning. Let me show you what that means. Give me Ecclesiastes 8 and 1 one more time. We must go precept upon precept so we could get the correct understanding. Because we've been lied to. So we got to get in this word and get into the truth. Remember what the words of Christ in John 8, 32. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Huh. Okay, we, we, We've been deceived as, as a people just believing whatever we hear. We got to get in this book and read, brother. So Ecclesiastes 8 and 1, one more time. Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Who is as the wise man? Who, who is as a wise man? Who is as a wise man? Read. And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Who can understand a thing? Who can understand the interpretation of a thing? Read. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. The Bible says a man's wisdom makes his face to shine. Remember when Moses came off the, uh, off of Mount Sinai, his face was lit up. Why? Because he received the laws of God. That's right. I'll go back to Daniel. Con. This is Daniel chapter 10 and verse 6. Bring it out. His body also was like the barrel uh -huh. and his face as the appearance of lightning. Meaning that Christ was full of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Fully. Read. And his eyes as lamps of fire. And that's going with Revelation 1 and Genesis 49. That his eyes would be red with wine. Read. And his arms and his feet like in color. To in color. Like in color. Read. Like in color to polish brass. Here it is again. Now give me Revelation. Or uh, 7 and 9. Daniel 7 and 9. Let's see what his father uh, gives us a description of the father as well. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. Bring it out. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days did sit. This is talking about the Father in Heaven. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. Uh-huh. Meaning righteousness. He's full of righteousness. Read. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Like the what? Like the pure wool. So why did they give us this? That's not, the, that's not the description of what the Bible says. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14. Ah. And start from verse 15. I'm going to show you the account where this started, where we got this image from. And then I want to show you who you are in the Bible, brother. Because you ain't a Colombian. You are God's chosen people. Ah. Where, did that, where did that term come from? Why did we call ourselves Mexican, Hispanic, Native American, Black, African American? Where did those terms come from? You ever wonder that? But we call ourselves those things, right? Does the Lord call us that? Is that? Can you find any of those things in the Bible that I just said? None of that's in the Bible. So who are we according to the Lord? So we'll find out in just a second. Go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 15. All right. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 15. Bring it out. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he has made an image of his son, so like of his child, soon take it away. See, so when this when this man, Cesar Borgier, died, his father was mourning. This is talking about the Pope of Rome, Alexander the Sixth. This is his son, uh, Cesar Borgier. Read. Now honored him as a god, and he honored him as a god. When his son died, he he lifted his son up as a god after he passed away. Read. Which was then a dead man and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Uh -huh. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. It was kept as a law. What is this going into? That Sunday worship. 
the Bible says that we must keep the Sabbath day holy. Not Sunday. Sunday is not the Sabbath. But the world has made Sunday the Sabbath now. Wow. And it, became, it started during the Renaissance with the Pope of Rome. Read. Wow. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of the kings. And the graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Like what you got around your neck, brother. That's a graven image. The Lord never told us to do that. I used to wear those. I used to support those all day long until I found out the truth. This was given to us by the Roman Catholic Church. They're the ones who instituted all these pagan customs. Read. Uh -huh. Who men could not honor in presence uh -huh. because they dwelt far off. They took the, the counterfeit of his visage from far. You see that? And this is the counterfeit. His visage mean the way that Christ really looks. They put a counterfeit up, this guy. Now, this isn't Christ. This isn't him, but this is more of a closer depiction of what the Bible says he looks like, okay? Not this guy. Not the same people that put us in slavery for 500 years, stole all your guys' land, murdered almost 130 million of you guys, okay? And forced Catholicism on our people, okay? That's what this guy came with, read. Huh and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the end that by this, their, their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent. You see that? And they, he was absent because he died. And so they put up his image to flatter the whole world, to deceive the whole world. Who painted this picture? Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. They're the ones who painted that picture. The same the same person who painted the Mona Lisa, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Mona Lisa, painted that picture. And that's the picture and image we got propagated all over this world, and our people are bowing down to it. All these churches with these crosses, and they're believing in this guy. And the Lord said that was a deception. Read. Ah, as if he were present. As if he were present. He's a dead man. He, he wasn't risen. Only Christ was risen. That's the right. Messiah, the anointed one. Not, his, not Pope Alexander the sixth son. Read. Uh, uh. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. Read it again. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set for forward the ignorant to more superstition. And all it is is superstition. Keep reading. For he, peradventure, willing to please one in authority, forced all his skill to make the re re resemblance of the best fashion. You see that? And how did they do that? How did they make the resemblance of the best fashion? How did they do this? They painted him. Okay? This is what they did. They painted the image of his son and then gave it to the whole world. Read. And so the multitude, allured by the grace of the work, took him now for a god and so everyone was really impressed by how how talented this painter was and they took him to be a god this is what the bible is saying read which a little before was but honored as a man and before he died he was nothing but a man but when he died his father the pope of rome propagated him put him up in the seat of god and made the whole world be subject to him and this is why our people are confused with Christianity and Catholicism to this very day. The Bible says we got to get into the Word. Give me Revelation 1 and 3. Uh -huh. Give me 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. I, I appreciate your guys' patience. This is the words of life. This could change. Okay, okay. Well, let me, let, me, let me share a couple more scriptures with you guys if that's okay. All right, so um, get Revelation 1 and 3. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Flyer. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. The Lord said, blessed is he that reads. Don't take no one's word for it. You got to believe what the Lord tells you guys, okay? Don't even listen to what we just said. If it's not, if it doesn't go with the words of God. Right, that's right. Knowledge is power. So if it doesn't line up with the words of God, we need to remove that. We got to understand what God is saying, okay? Go ahead. Revelation 1 and 3. Revelation 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of his prophecy, of this prophecy. It's we like, got to hear the words of this prophecy. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, Hosea 4. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. This is what the Lord said about you, brother. What's your name, by the way? Oscar. I'm Uriel, brother. So this is what the Lord says about you, Oscar. Read. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Uh-huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord said, you are an holy people. Do you know what the word holy means? It means to be set apart. 
The biblical definition of holy means to be set apart or sanctified. You are a set apart people. This is what the Lord is saying. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. He said he chose you, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, to be a special people. Read. Unto himself, above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Ab above all people that are upon the face of the earth. But when you look around at our people, does it seem like we're above or are we at the bottom? We at the bottom. We in the ghettos. We filling up the prison houses. We gang banging. We on drugs. We killing each other. All this stuff is happening to us, right? This, this is this is what the Lord told us. Now watch this. Give me Amos three and one, Hosea four and six. Bring that out. This is the book of Hosea chapter four and verse six. Bring it out. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The Lord said His people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So what is this knowledge that we're lacking that's causing us to be destroyed? Do you know? Let me show you. Malachi, now, I like that reading. Get that Malachi two and seven. So let's see what the Lord says. This knowledge that we're lacking, why we're a destroyed people. This is the book of Malachi chapter two and verse seven. Bring it out. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. These pastors, these priests, all around this world should keep knowledge. The Bible says, read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. The what? The law at his mouth. The Bible says they should seek the laws, the statutes, and commandments. But they're not doing that. They're saying you can do what you want. Jesus just loves you. That's not what the Bible says. Give me John 14, 15, Amos 3 and 1. I'm going to share three more scriptures with you because I know you guys got to go. Amos 3 and 1. Start from that. Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Now, you might not have the full understanding right now, but these are seeds that are being planted. You are an Israelite, brother. You're not uh -huh. a Colombian. You are God's chosen people. You are an Israelite. Read against the whole family which i brought up from the land of egypt we were the ones that came up out of the land of egypt 3500 years ago before we came to this wicked country read saying you only have i known of all the families of the earth the lord said out of all the families of the earth that everybody he created he said he only chose the israelites who are the so-called black hispanic and native americans we say so-called because that's the name that they gave us and then they put a certain people in, in our land and named themselves who we truly are Okay, read. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. The Lord said, because we didn't listen to him, he says, I'm going to punish you for breaking his law, statutes, and commandments. Iniquity is sin. Sin is the same as breaking God's commandments. That's what the Bible says. Okay, um, John 14, 15. This is the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 15. No. These are the words of the Lord. If ye love me, keep my commandments. You love the Lord? You love the Lord? What the Lord said we got to do. We got to keep his commandments, which means we have to learn them. We got to get in this word and really understand it, apply it, and, and be that light that Yahweh Shai, that Christ told us to be. He said, be, be the light of the world, okay? We got to really start obeying the, the voice of the Lord, John 10, 27. I'm going to leave you with one more. I'll leave you guys with one more. This is the book of John, chapter 10, and verse 27. These are the words of the Lord. My sheep hear my voice. The Lord said, my sheep hear my voice. See, his people, the ones that are going to make it to the kingdom, they're going to hear his voice. Read. And I know them, and they follow me. And we got to follow the way, the truth, and the life, which the world calls ignorantly Jesus Christ. We got to follow him. Okay? We got to get in this word and learn who we are as a people because we've been stripped of who we are. If, if you guys want to listen, I can go over some things to show you. But, okay. Hey, well, hey, subscribe to the channel, brother and sister. It's free. You know, you can find out who you are according to the Lord, not according to what the world has called you. You guys are Israelites, all right? You're not Columbians, you're Israelites. That's what the Bible calls you, all right? All right you guys have a blessed day. All right. Um, so let's get back to, um, actually, let's get uh, Matthew 25. All right.